So we're going to go ahead and take a look at specifically fractions with terminating decimal representations. So in those previous examples, we were able to convert these fractions to decimals that terminated or ended, right? And so that's what we've been studying so far. And so here's a theorem, right, a rule to follow. A fraction in simplest form, and that's important there, a fraction in simplest form Right, considering that has a terminating decimal representation if and only if there are twos and or fives in the factorization, right, in its prime factorization, right, looking at uh, B, the denominator. And so you could quickly look at these and say, which ones are terminating? That's what we want to we wanna look at here. And so to look at a set of an examples here real quick, 4 over 3 would be what we call a repeating because notice the denominator has a three and needs to have twos and or fives in that denominator in B and it has a three so it's going to be repeating. Seven over eight is seven over two cubed. You can see that um, since there's only a two in the denominator it will be a terminating decimal. What is its decimal? I'll convert that into a base of ten in the denominator and you will see you end up with 0.875. You can also check this with your calculator, but I want you to understand what makes these terminating or non-terminating, right, or repeating. 15 has a 3 and a 5 in its, in its denominator, and so that's why in this one, this one would be repeating, because if you consider um, 1 over 15, Right, 1 over 15 is equal to 1 over 3 times 5. And here it has to have 2s and or 5s only. Here, 3 over 16 is 2 to the power of 4. And then you can see there's only 2s in the denominator in simplest form, so it's going to be terminating. So important idea of why decimals terminate. Again, has to do with what's in the denominator. It has to be a power of 5 because those powers of 5 match up with, I mean, sorry, pow twos, powers of 10 because they match up with our base 10 notation. Let's try another one. Let's go on and take a look at how would we order decimals. And so that's a, 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 a traditional um, topic that students struggle with, especially when the decimals are not of the same length. And so terminating decimals can, can compared many different ways and so when we look at them here um, there are multiple ways to do it the most common algorithm is practiced is to kind of put them at the same length right you can use a hundreds chart you can use a number line um, you can put into fraction form uh, but it, it becomes again in, in common core and fifth grade students being able to recognize right which decimals are bigger than other decimals and so in this case, this here, students obviously, oh, 23 is bigger than 7. But they need to understand it's not a 7, it really represents 70. And so you can see that this is bigger than this. And the way we do that is, is trying to put it into a common denominator. This is 7 tenths and 23 hundredths. So let's put it in a common denominator, and now we can compare them. And that's what we're doing right here when we make it 0.70. And same thing here. What are we doing here? Um, this here is um, technically 135 over 1,000. This one here is 14 over 100. And if you're going to have a common denominator, it's 140 over 1,000. And so then you can see this one has to be bigger there. And so that's how we would order them. Um, I want you to look at these examples. I have the solution here. You can also take a look at... Uh, um, this situation here of using uh, mental math and estimation here. So now we have some idea of size and could compare them. We can now use what we've done in the past, compatible numbers, to do some of these calculations here. And so again, the decimals follow the same rules of addition that we've had before. I would move these together and you can see some of these explanations here. A half times a four, I would do that first. Again, you can use associative property to do that. 6 times 8.5, this is a distributive property. Notice here, you can turn the 8 into 8 plus 0.5, and then distribute eight times, 6 times 8, 6 times a half, which is 3. So again, we can use our math of magic here to do our calculations. This one here, let's compensate, turn this into, uh, turn this into a 2. So add 0 0.02, subtract 
to here and you can see you end up with um, additive compensation here. Here we use the equal additions method, turn this into 7.38, turn this into 5, and now we can subtract. Again, so the same magic works uh, just like if there was no decimal point, like if these were whole numbers, we can do the same thing. And this one here, this one is um, going to be distributive property also. If we notice that there's a, a, a 1 fourth or a 0.25 that can be taken out, you can do 17 plus 23. There's your 40, and then 1 fourth of 40 is 10. So something to think about with that.